All right, hey guys. Um, lately, I've been having a lot of people on the forums ask questions on uh, can we get a best practice guide or can we get a video that shows how you set up campaigns uh, to your money site. And what I might show you here might be different than um, how you build links to your money site. You might have higher standards or you might want to tweak things and that's completely fine. This is just how I've done it and I've had some pretty good results on my websites. So this definitely isn't um, required to use these settings. This is just to give you a basic understanding of how to set up uh, a decent campaign. So I guess we'll go ahead and get started. As you can see, completely fresh install, nothing set up. So how I do this, first tab, submission tab, I just want to say right away that I build links um, or I use this software on my VPS. I don't use this on my home PC and that's mainly because I do a lot of things on my home PC and, and uh, I don't like the software running in the background while I'm doing it because uh, I just don't want it to slow down the resources on my home network. So if you can't afford it, getting a VPS might be really beneficial. It allows you to crank up your settings a lot and also um, doesn't take up the resources on your home PC which allows you to take care of the things you need to do when you're at home. So since I'm running this on a VPS, I might have this at around 100 threads. And the higher the thread count, the more CPU and RAM and bandwidth it uses. So if you're on a home PC, you might want to try 10. If everything runs good on 10 threads, you might want to increase it to 20 or somewhere around there. HTML timeout, I'll leave this, I'll put this around 120 and keep it there. Also, if you want to get the best out of the software, it's recommended that you buy a set of uh, decent private proxies. You don't have to do this. You can use the built-in public proxy scraper. I use pu private proxies because I like to uh, I like to build links fast, and um, using private proxies usually keeps you more anonymous and just allows everything to run a lot smoother and faster. So what I would do is I would import my proxies, which I've already done. And I would test those proxies. I'll go ahead and test them again. Once those are imported, it's waiting for the last threads to finish. Okay, threads are finished. I'll show you how my proxies are set up. You can see it's just the IP colon and then the port and I would go to add proxy parse file like this login password I would select this proxy file import them and test them and then I'm good to go so I click OK here go back to the options and then since I'm using a good amount of private proxies um, I'm able to take advantage of this feature here which allows you to adjust the custom time um, between search engine queries and by default you could kind of consider this an advanced feature if you don't really know what this is I wouldn't really bother with it because you could end up uh, getting your IPs banned and uh, causing more trouble than you really need to so if you do have a decent amount of proxies you can take advantage of this by default I believe the software will wait 60 seconds in between each search engine query to help prevent uh, IP blocks or anything like that but if you have a decent amount of proxies you can click this it'll give you a warning so if I want to build links fast I'll take this down to 5-10 seconds and uh, that's how I would set that up and that's only because I have a good amount of proxies if I didn't I wouldn't worry about it you'll still be build links at a decent rate this was just a feature that was requested 
for um, from uh, advanced users that are familiar with software like Scrapebox and how the search engines work and all that. So you do not have to use that, and uh, unless you have a good amount of proxies, it's recommended that you don't use that at all. Second thing, CAPTCHA. Um, some people use CAPTCHA Sniper, which is great. So what you would do is, if you had CAPTCHA Sniper, you would set that up here, or you would just select that, install it on your computer. Um, I don't have CAPTCHA Sniper installed on here, so I use, I will use, I usually use like the cheapest CAPTCHA solver, probably like Shani BPO is, is pretty good. Um, they're really cheap, and also Death by CAPTCHA. So if I enter in. my login information and click test you can see it will show your balance everything's good and I'll leave it like that I also unchecked finally ask user if everything else fails if you leave this checked um, you might get pop-ups and stuff like that so I usually leave that unchecked because I don't like to deal with any of that indexing I leave this on submit backlink URLs to blog engines basically after a link has been verified this will ping it for you to help get it crawled. Also, I use the GSA SEO indexer. Um, that's just another software that GSA makes. It's about 20 bucks, and it communicates with this software. So when a submission is verified, it automatically sends it into the GSA SEO indexer software if it's installed on your computer, and um, that software will begin indexing or starting the process to help index those sites. This is definitely not required, but I use it, and um, if you don't have it, then definitely just uncheck that, and then you have all your other options here for indexing. Filters, I leave this on. If you're going to be building links to a money site or anything that's important, you probably want to leave this checked. This is just a malware filter to make sure your links aren't built on um, any of these sites that have been blacklisted for malware. So I would just just check this button and leave everything else by default unless you want to tweak it. It will update these malware websites and pull the list every 24 hours by default. Um, the advanced filter you don't need to go into right now. Um, that's has something completely different than uh, than what's required to run a project. That's basically a search engine scraper. Um, you can see here it's already started downloading the black disk, I mean the blacklist and updating them. So as soon as you check that, it will start doing that. <clears throat> so just leave everything here default. So you've got your sub your threads to set, HTML timeout, proxies. If you want to set a custom time between search engines, this is definitely not required. Your captcha, what you want to use for captcha, or you don't have to use captcha at all. Um, if you don't use CAPTCHA at all, you won't get as good of a success rate because some platforms actually require CAPTCHA in order to submit. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have CAPTCHA set up and you're wondering why you're not getting a certain type of a platform, it's probably because that requires CAPTCHA. Submit backlinks to blog search engines, pinging. I have all this uh, used by default and then of course the malware filter and that'll take care of your general settings your global options okay now for actually creating a project what I do if it's a money side or something important I will usually check pretty much everything except indexer pingback or refer and I don't check those because uh, they're usually not, they don't add that much value as far as links go. So this is the setup I use because I like to get a wide variety of different link types. So after that, of course, is the fun part of actually setting up your campaign. 
Okay, so the first thing you want to do is, of course, import your URLs. All of this, all of these fields are um, covered in more detail in, I believe, tutorial video three. So I'm not going to explain what every single thing is here. I'll just cover a little bit of it. But uh, so I'll go ahead and set this up. I have my websites. And what's really important is post penguin to vary your anchor text and vary it as much as you can. And that means not just using your normal keywords, but using your keyword variations and using keywords like visit website, click here, see more, um, just general anchor text that, that uh, are widely used on the web. This has been pretty important post penguin that I've noticed. So make sure and use those. And you also want to use the actual URL of your website as an anchor text. So to, the easiest way to do that, you can see I have this formatted the way I explain in uh, tutorial video three, which basically locks your anchor text with your your website URL. So you can have a bunch of website URLs and the anchor text locked to each one. And you can use percent URL percent and that will automatically use your exact URL as one of the anchors. So you can put that here, you could put it in the anchor text here. If you're using your anchor text in this format where there are, your anchors are locked to your URL um, it will not use the anchor text here but it's good to put something in here by default so I'll just put anchor one <clears throat> as an example so what you want to do is also make sure and import as many keywords as possible I usually like to use a minimum of a hundred at least a hundred keywords so the tool I use Actually, I use a bunch of different tools, but I've been playing a lot with Keyword Map Pro lately. This is definitely not required at all. You can use a free Google Keyword Tool, Market Samurai. If you have Scrapebox, there's a Keyword Scraper in there that works great. So if my niche was weight loss, I would do it here. And I would just get some keywords copy them I would just paste them into a file one per line file save and then I just import them in here so I have 51 keywords like I say I usually try to have at least a hundred But of course, a few hundred or even a thousand would be even better than that. For email, I use Hotmail. I think they work one of the best. Um, so yeah, it's uh, Hotmail works great. Some people use Gmail, but I don't prefer them. I think um, I've had pretty good success using Hotmail emails. Okay, so after you create your email account, you just enter it here. then go to the email verification tab the easiest way to do this is to click find settings and it will try to find the settings for you it knows the hotmail settings so that's why it's uh, another good reason to use hotmail um, it fills in the port and pop three and all that for you so it's basically just a matter of checking one of these options here and putting in your password and then you click test and it will automatically log in and uh, test it for you and make sure everything works right. Um, to get information on each of these fields, you can hover over them and it'll usually give you some tips and what each field is used for. Like this is an article, the actual article body would go here, an article summary goes here. And you want to try 
and keep everything as unique as possible. So spinning everything as much as you can.